They're here, everyone. They are the smart kids at the shops with their mothers or fathers, riding their bikes around the streets and playing down by the river, as well as talking to their friends on their smartphones. Join the smart kids each week as they discover, explore, and solve the mysteries of today. Here's your host, J.T. Crowley. And again, welcome from Derby in the United Kingdom, where I live. And this podcast, I'm going to talk to you about um, getting a good start. Because I've done the plots for you and I've done the main characters. So I'm now moving on to lesson five, which is all about getting a good start. And I'm going to show you how I use my starts in all my stories. And I'm going to read a few of them just so you can get to see how I do it. So, lesson five, getting a good start. And what should um, be in the start? Well, let's have a look. This is how I do it. For me, in your start, you should have the following things. Um, one, you should be introducing your main character. So that your reader knows this is the main character and his or her name goes first. So they know it's the main character. Secondly, you introduce your sub-characters, remember? The, the second layer of characters that go under the main character and they are there to support the main character. So, in your introduction, you should be giving your main character away and the sub-characters away. Um, and also, you should be saying to the reader where the character comes from. Where are they? Um, what part of the world? And you can also, it says here, I've put down it, comes from where? Yeah, the background. So, you know, like in a lot of my stories, I give you the background, where they've come from. And the fifth one is, what time of year is it? Is it autumn? Is it spring? Is it winter? Is it summer? Because again, that sets the scene, it sets the atmosphere, it sets the background because it sets the weather. So that's how I tend to do it. So in my introduction, which has got to be powerful because it's, that is very vital because you've only got those few short lines to entice and engage your reader to see what you've written about. So, let's see how I've done it. So I'm going to get my little book here, The Smart Kids, and I'm going to go through a few of the um, characters. And I just wanted to keep this session short and simple. So, your start is vital, it's important, it needs to introduce your main character, your sub-characters, it, where in the world your character is, the background, and for me, what time of the year is it? And again, also remembering that if your character is in the Northern Hemisphere, well, the summer months are, you know, May, June, July, August. If they're in the Southern Hemisphere, in New Zealand or Australia or in South America, it's the reverse. June, July, August, May, they're the winter seasons, the colder month seasons. So again, you've got to uh, adapt your storyline and say, oh, no point in saying, oh, it was a lovely snowy day and you've got your character in January and your character is in New Zealand. It's summer. It doesn't stack up. So just remember that. And of course, Writing your stories is all about, and I say it every single podcast, it's all about getting the, your readers 
to turn those pages. That's what it's all about. So let's have a look. Right, so in my book, The Smart Kids, Anjala, she was my first character. Let's see how I do the introduction. Home for Anjala and her brother Rajesh was a small, snow-covered village high in the Himalayan mountains of the tiny kingdom of Nepal. In the valley below lay the small town of Pokhara, where she and her brother attended school most days. The daily treks back and forth to school along the narrow and dangerous paths were challenging. But to two Nepalese children, this was the norm. So, in Anjala, the very first line, I named the character. I said, home for Anjala. And then I said, and her brother Rajesh. Because Rajesh is the sub-character. He's her brother. And I've also said to you, it's a snow-covered village high in the Himalayan mountains of the tiny kingdom of Nepal. I'm telling you it's winter. I'm telling you that the country is Nepal. I'm telling you that they're high up in the mountains. I've given you the, the main character's name and I've given you the sub-character's name. All within just a few short sentences of the first story. That's what you need to think about. Let's go to um, my next little character. And we're going to Scotland. And of course, if you look at the book, this is Hamish. Now, this is the introduction. The school summer holidays in Scotland were drawing to an end. Hamish and his friends, Kirdak and Niall, had spent the last remaining days up in the moorlands tracking the red deer. They had built a small hideout from local stones, which they had managed to scavenge from the dry stone builder's yard at the end of the village. The hidey hole was a perfect watchtower, particularly as they had managed to blend it into the natural surroundings by throwing purple heather and fallen tree branches from the nearby forest over the top. Hamish had become attracted to a magnificent 14-pointer stag, which he named Rufus. So again, can you see that in this story, I've told you that in the first line, it's the summer holidays. They're in Scotland. Hamish is the main character. His friends, Kirdak and Niall, they're the sub-characters. And I've told you that they spent the last of the remaining of the summer on the moorlands. And also, I told you that, because in the story is about the, um, the deer, the, the stag, and I named the stag Rufus because it's all about protecting Rufus from the game hunters. So when the opening gambit, the opening paragraphs, there is the powerful but vital introduction. It's there. And if I go to, i give you a few more examples. Let's go to another one of my characters. Let's go to, bear with me, one, my little Chilean boy from Santiago in Chile. Summer was one's favourite time of the year and living on the outskirts of Santiago, Chile's capital city, with the Andes mountain range in the background was for this cheeky football mad 12 year old boy an idyllic place to grow up. So I've told you there that it's summer. The character, main character is one. I've told you the time of the year. I told you where he's come from, Santiago, the Chile. 
And I've also said, you know, the background, the scenery is the Andes Mountains, that magnificent range of mountains that goes all the way down South America. I've told him his age. I've described him as a cheeky football mad character. And he's a 12 year old boy. So again, in the opening lines, I've told you quite a lot about the story and that's what you need to do. I don't introduce actually in this one here, Jose, the sub character, until a little bit later on in the story. So sometimes you don't necessarily have to put your sub characters in the main opening shots. But as long as you get your sub character in pretty quickly afterwards, that's okay. Let's have another example. Let's go to um, my little Russian girl. And this is, so here we go. Yakutush Airlines flight R3477 from Moscow's Vonkanova International Airport touched down at Yakutush Airport 24 hours late having been delayed as a direct result of adverse weather conditions. The normal night flight time for the 757-200 was around seven hours, with a bit of give and take for unseen circumstances. The blizzards that had been raging across the central Siberian plateau over the last few days had finally blown themselves out. Dushka, standing in the middle of the arrivals hall with her older brother Mikhail, had driven them from the short distance to the airport that stood on the northern perimeter of the city, looked at the weather app on her phone. It was showing minus 17. Spring was just around the corner, but winter hadn't quite finished sweeping the area. She had only one last trick up her sleeve. The snowstorm that was spreading south from the Arctic Circle would arrive later that night bringing with it more snow to the city that was already very deep in it. Yakutush is the capital city of the Russian Republic of Saka, sitting on the Lena River, approximately 450 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle. So again, I've told you where the character is. I've given you a bit about the background. I've you have introduced to Mikhail, the, the sub-character, he's her older brother. I've told you where the story is set, in the Siberia, the coldest city on earth, in Yakutush. And so immediately you have told the reader a lot of information and hopefully that they like that information because then they will go on to read the next chapter and then to do this. Keep turning those pages and looking up and down the, the book and going, oh wow, I need to read some more of this. This is what you write for, getting your readers to turn the pages. Let's have another example. Let's go to... Um, Click over, Anaru. Anaru was born in Dunedin, a city known for its Scottish and Maori heritage on the east coast of South Island, New Zealand. His father's side of the family originated from Aberdeen in Scotland, arriving in New Zealand close to 40 years ago. His mother's descendants, could be traced back to one of the local Maori tribes around Rotorua on North Island. When he was born, his father had insisted in keeping the Scottish family tradition of the name of Andrew, but his mother wanted a Maori connection. Hence, the compromise, Anaru, the Maori for Andrew. Queenstown, where Anaru grew up, was a small resort town that sat on the shore of Lake Wakatipu in Otago, a region in the southwest corner of South Island, New Zealand. The town itself was renowned for its sporting excellence, 
in winter, the Southern Alps, the backbone of South Ireland that surrounded Queenstown attracted thousands of skiers from around the world. So, again, I have the first word in that story is Anaru. There's the main character. He's from Dunedin, that's where he was born. He's from South Island, New Zealand. And I've told you that he's grown up in Queenstown. So yes, he was born in Dunedin, but they moved to Queenstown. And I'm telling you where Queenstown is, it's on the shoreline of Lake Wakatipu in the Southern Alps of New Zealand. And I say to you, it's a sporty town because I'm telling you about the skiers. And in the summertime, if you go just a little bit further down, there's G-force, paragliding, trekking, hang gliding, water paragliding, jet skiing, parasailing. It's a sporty event. And then, and then to go on to talk to you about the sub-characters there, who they are and what they do. But the first bit is they're all there to attract your reader to look at your story. And we'll go for one more. Emerita. And this is my little Swiss girl. The small Swiss alpine city of Davos lies near the southern German border. For Emerita, and her three-year-old St. Bernard rescue dog, Gretel, it was home. Midwinter in the Alps meant deep snow, and with that came the reality of avalanches, as layers of snow that had built up on the mountains over the harsh winter months became unstable, threatening to engulf everything that lay in their path. So again, I've named the main character. I've told you where they come from. I've set the scene, it's in the Alps, it's all about story of avalanches, it's on the southern German border, the city of Davos. So I have set the scene. I haven't told you the sub-character is her brother Henrik. He comes in very shortly afterwards. But I have introduced you to a sub-character. This sub-character isn't a human being. It's a dog. Animals can be characters. So I've told you within the third line here that the Mount St. Bernard rescued dog was called Gretel and she was three years old. See how you do it? It's quite simple, but it gets the point across. <clears throat> and then hopefully the reader's going to go, I want to know more about this story. So that's how I generally do them. I Just to recap, I'm going to come back here. I introduced the main character. I introduced the sub-characters pretty early on. Where does the character come from? Set the scene, the background. What time of the year is it? So hopefully for those little examples that I've given you from my stories, you can see this pattern here. Because it's all about getting a good start. And what should be in your start. So... I hope that's, I said this is going to be a little short podcast and I hope you found this useful. Next week, I'm actually going to do the podcast of Alderwood, the Icelandic boy. I'm going to read you the storyline, part of it, so you can see how the introduction is done. You can see how the main character, Alderwood, is there, the sub-characters are there you know, the floating characters, the plot, the background, the scenery, the setting, all that. So you can now start to see how I knit the story together with what I've been telling you over the past few weeks. 
So I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. But for that now, thank you very much for listening. Uh, stay safe and have a good week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to The Smart Kids. <laughs> Want to follow more of their adventures? Check out The Smart Kids by J.T. Crowley on Amazon.com now.